Okay, we're going to start uh, the next unit, uh, Transformations of Functions. And today we're just going to do an intro to the whole topic. So we want to recall that a function is a rule that gives a single output. If there is more than one output, it is not considered a function. It's just a relation. So we need to keep that in mind at all times. Let's look for uh, a quick moment at this relation that I have drawn here in green. And we're going to use what, what we call the vertical line test. So we're going to take a regular line, and we're going to um, slide it across our relation and take a look at any given point. If there's more than one y value for every x value, it does not pass the vertical line test. So right here in this position, we can see there's going to be two y values for this x value. So we know it fails the vertical line test. So it is not a function. It is only a relation. Okay, so that's the vertical line test. We can look at these. I have a, a line already started here that I'm going to take over here. And we're going to take a look at this first relation. And we're going to see if we can take the vertical line test and take it right through the graph and see if it has one output for every input. So as we go, and sometimes it's hard to tell. As we go along, we can see we follow the green line. And this passes the vertical line test. So yes, this is a function. And if we continue on to the next one, take a look. So far it's good, but at this point, a few points here, there's like it's touching it in three different spots here. One, two, three. And you only need one case of this. One case says it's no longer a function. It will be a relation. Okay. Let's look at the equations. Let's find out if something's a function when it's in equation form. First, we're going to look at uh, uh, this uh, relation, x squared plus y squared equals 16. And any time it's squared like that, we can actually go and do the work. We'll sub in the y value for 0 and find out what the output will be. And when we take the square root of 16 as we rearrange and isolate y, we get plus or minus 4. So when we sub in x to be 0, we get plus or minus 4, two outputs for the same input. This one also is no longer a function. So we'll continue on. We're going to look at linear inequalities, another little topic that I want to refresh your, your, your minds to so that we can continue on in this unit. And we're going to uh, look at uh, these two examples. First, we have x is less than 6, and we want to graph this on a number line. When there is no equals with it, um, right here, this is just less than. x is less than 6. And there's no equals there. So what we do is we denote that with an open bubble. And there's, this should say negative 6, actually. Sorry about that. And less than goes this way. And that's how we denote that in uh, graphical form on a number line. The second one um, says 3x is greater than or equal to 9. So I'm going to write that down. So 3x is greater than. or equal to 2, 9. And what we have to do is we have to isolate x. So what we do is we divide out the 3, because the x is not by itself, because it has a 3 multiplied to it. So if we divide out the 3, we must do it to both sides. That leaves x is greater than or equal to 3, because those will reduce and leave us with the 3. So x is greater than or equal to 3. We denote this with a closed circle. Equals is a close. When there's no equals, there is no close. It's open. So there we go. x is greater than or equal to 3. I actually had my little bubbles there. I could have transferred on, make it look a little prettier, just like so. Here's a couple um, examples. We want to say, what did we do to get to each step? And in the first case, 
I looked, I needed to get x by itself. It had a minus 2 connected to it uh, and a 7 multiplied to it. So first thing we're going to do is add the 2 off. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. The 12 and 2 is 14, leaving us with this next step. What is keeping x from being by itself now? It has a 7 multiplied. The opposite of multiplication is division, and that becomes x is greater than 2. So on the number line, greater than, without the equals, is an open hole, and there we go. We denote that on the 2, and we show it's greater than. Here's another one. We have to know there's a, a rule. When we multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality switches its rotation. So in this case, what is keeping x from being by itself? And it has a negative 4 multiplied to it. So we must divide by negative 4. And that will switch the direction of the inequality. I put my line there. So in this case now, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. When multiplying or dividing by a negative, change the direction of the inequality. Very, very important. So then to denote this one, um, on our number line, we want to make sure the negative 3 is colored in because equals is part of this result and greater than. So, good job. So, we'll continue on. Actually, we'll take a small break and we'll continue on in a little bit.